Hello! Today I want to talk a little bit about how to do the journal entries related to notes receivable. But first, let's discuss what a promissory note is. A promissory note is a promise to pay a specified amount of money at some future date, typically with interest. The party on the receiving end of a promissory note is said to have a notes receivable, which is an asset account in some ways similar to accounts receivable. The party on the paying end of a promissory note is said to have a notes payable, which is a liability account in some ways similar to accounts payable. Now, promissory notes can be created for a variety of reasons, but some of the most common are for performing a service, extending a past due accounts receivable, and making a loan, which we'll see as we complete this problem in a moment. The focus for this video will be the journal entries related to notes receivable, so now let's turn to a problem. So the question says, prepare the journal entries to record the transactions listed below related to PTV Broadcasting Company. So we have our journal paper over here on the left, and then we have some charts that are going to help us calculate the interest for the notes on the right. So in 2009, on November 17th, we provided a service in exchange for a $10,000, 8%, 120-day note dated November 17, 2009. So before we record the journal entry, Let's calculate the interest on this note. So here I have three different periods, in total in 2009 and 2010. And the reason we're keeping track of those separately is because this note started in 2009 on November 17, but it's going to last for 120 days, meaning it's going to be collected sometime in 2010. Therefore we want to keep track of how much interest was earned in 2009 and how much interest was earned in 2010 and report that separately. So the way we calculate the interest on a note is by taking the principal times the rate times the time. So the principal is going to be $10,000, that's how much the note was for, and that's going to be the same for all three time periods. The rate is 8%, and that's also going to be the same for all three time periods. For time in the total period, we need to take the total number of days, which is 120, and divide that by 360. Now the reason we use 360 instead of 365 is due to the accountant's rule of what's called ordinary interest. Back in the olden days it was easier to calculate by hand the interest if we use 360 instead of 365 in our denominator, and the rule has stuck with us today. So just remember to use 360 in your interest calculations. For 2009, we need to figure out how many days this note was outstanding in 2009. Well, the creation of this note was November 17, so if we take the 30 days in November, minus 17, we get 13 days in November that this note was outstanding, plus the 31 days in December equals 44 total days in 2009. So that's going to be 44 divided by 360. Now for 2010, the easiest way to do this is to note that, well, we already have 44 days, and in total there's 120 days that this note is outstanding. So if we take 120 and we subtract the 44 days that we've already recorded, we find that there are 76 days remaining that this note will be outstanding in 2010. So that's going to be 76 divided by 360. Now note that these two interest revenue amounts should add up to your total interest revenue, which they do. So if you've made a mistake here, you might be able to catch that if the two numbers don't add up to your total interest revenue. Now you don't really need the information here in this chart just yet, but it's kind of nice to get it out of the way when the problem tells you about a new note. So again, on November 17, we provided a service in exchange for a $10,000, 8%, 120-day note dated November 17, 2009. So since the company is getting a new note, they are going to have a notes receivable, an asset account on their books. So we record notes receivable. And that's going to be for the $10,000 principal amount. Now since this was an exchange for a $10,000 service, we're going to record service revenue as our credit. And that's also going to be for $10,000. So on December 31st, we are asked to prepare the year-end adjusting entry to record the accrued interest on the November 17 note. Now the reason why we're recording this entry is to recognize that in 2009, this note was outstanding for the 44 days that we calculated earlier and therefore there's going to be some interest revenue, which ends up being $97.78. So the journal entry recognizes that, well, we don't have this interest yet. 
we're going to be getting this interest in 2010 when the note is received. So we call this interest receivable, and that's for the $97.78. And we're also recognizing that we earned that much money in 2009. So this is going to be interest revenue. And that's also for $97.78. Next, in 2010, we received payment of principal and interest for the November 17 note. So since we are receiving payment, we're going to have to debit cash to increase our cash account. And that's going to be for the total of the principal and the interest. The principal is 10000 and the interest in total is $266.67. So when we add those two numbers together, we get $10,266.67. Now, we are going to be receiving that interest from the previous period. So we have to close out that interest receivable account, which has a $97.78 balance. So if we credit interest receivable for $97.78, that will close out this account. Now we also have some additional revenue related to 2010, and that's the $168.89. So we're going to record that here as interest revenue for $168.89. Now again, note that these two numbers add up to the total interest, which is $266.67. The receivable was the amount from 2009, and the revenue is the amount from 2010. Now finally, we can record the notes receivable. And that's just closing out this account. Since we are no longer owed this money, we want to close out our notes receivable account, which has a balance of $10,000 related to this transaction on November 17. So we can credit that for $10,000. Next, on May 15, we accepted a 30,000 9% 60-day note dated May 15, 2010, in granting E. Chicken a time extension on his past due accounts receivable. So once again, since we have a new note, it might be helpful to calculate the interest on this one. Now, note this one's only for 60 days and starts in May, so it's not going to go into the next year, which would be 2011. It's all going to be in 2010. So there's no reason to list out multiple years like we did on the last note. And in this case, the principal is for $30,000. The rate is 9%. And the time is 60 days. So that's going to be equal to 60 divided by 360. Again, using that ordinary interest rule. And that gives us an interest revenue when we multiply those three numbers together of $450. So again, we don't really need this $450 quite yet. We're going to be using that in a future journal entry. Right now, we just have to record the inception of this note, which is going to be for $30,000. So that's going to be notes receivable, $30,000. And remember last time we had provided a service right on the November 17 note. So we recorded service revenue. But this time, it's not for a service. It's for a time extension on a past due accounts receivable. So we're going to use the accounts receivable account. And that's also going to be for $30,000. So basically, each chicken was not able to pay this accounts receivable. So we're getting rid of the accounts receivable and we're transferring it into a notes receivable. So next we have on July 14, each chicken refuses to pay his note. So this is kind of an interesting journal entry. Some people might think, well, do we even really need to do a journal entry here? And the answer is yes. And that's because the note was only supposed to last for 60 days, and now the 60 days are up, so we need to recognize that the time period of the note is over. So what we're going to do is we're going to be transferring this back into an accounts receivable. So we're going to debit accounts receivable. And that's going to be for the amount that we would have received if each chicken was to pay his note. So if he was to pay, he was going to pay the principal and the interest. So that's 30000 plus 450. So that's going to be $30,450, which we're still going to try to get out of each chicken. Now we also have to record our interest revenue. And that's for $450. And then we also have to record our notes receivable because the note is no longer outstanding and the note was, remember, for $30,000. And the reason why we don't have an interest receivable like we did last time is because this note did not go over the calendar year. The note was only outstanding in 2010, so we only need the interest revenue. Next, if we scroll down, we see on December 3rd, 
we accepted a 20,000 7% 90-day note dated as a loan to V. Clinton. So maybe I'll give you a moment now to see if you can calculate the interest revenue for total 2010 and 2011. And we'll be back with you in a minute with the answers. All right, we are back with the note from December 3rd. The principal was 20,000, the rate was 7%, and the time was 90 days, so I used 90 out of 360, if you look over here, for the total. In 2010, there was 28 days, which I found by taking 31 minus 3. And then in 2011, there were 62 days, which I found by taking 90 and subtracting the 28. And if you multiply those numbers together, you should get these three numbers for the interest revenue. So now let's record this note, which was on December 3. So this is going to be notes receivable. And that's going to be for the amount of 20,000. And since this was a loan, that means there's going to be a payout of cash. So we're basically paying them $20,000 that they're going to pay us back with interest at a future date. Next, on December 31st, we are asked to prepare the year-end adjusting entry to record the accrued interest on the December 3rd note. So this is to record the interest in 2010. Since 2010 is over, we have to record the $108.89 interest revenue related to this period. And since we haven't received that interest revenue in cash quite yet, we have to record interest receivable, since we'll be getting it in the next period. And that's going to be for $108.89. And of course, we have to record the interest revenue for the same amount of $108.89. Finally, on March 3rd, we received the payment of the principal and the interest for the December 3rd note. So this is going to be very similar to the journal entry we did up here for March 17th. So you're going to be using this chart over here to record that journal entry. So maybe I'll give you a moment now to pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer for this journal entry. All right, we are back with the answer for the final journal entry. The cash amount should be debited, and that's for $20,350. That's the principal and the interest revenue added together. The interest receivable was to close out the interest from the previous year, which was for $108.89. The interest revenue was for the current year, which was for $241.11. And the notes receivable was for the principal amount of $20,000 to close out that note. All right, we are finished with our journal entries for notes receivable. And I know this might look like a bit much right now and maybe intimidating, but of course, you know what they say, practice makes perfect. And it really is true. The more that you do this, the easier these journal entries will be.